Hello and welcome to your next XHTML tutorial. Now, what if you, the web developer, would like to collect information from the user, like maybe it's a job application or an online survey? Let's figure out how to do that. So first, I'm going to create, just to add style, these header tags, and I'm going to center them. Style equals... as such. And then between these tags, I'm going to type in online survey. Let's see how that looks. Oh, there it is. So now I want to create a form where, I, where the user can type in into certain text fields or select radio buttons or drop down list. In order to do this, you're going to have to create a form using form tags. Now the first things first, there's an attribute called action, and this is going to tell when the user submits it where it's going to go. Um, this, this is a whole other entity, and I'm not really going to get um, far into that, so I'm just going to use a, a common example, which is the mail to, to a certain email, and I'm going to type in a fake email here. Then you have to tell it to do that when it's done. I know it's a it's a whole other thing, but there's a method attribute called post, or then the property for it is post. So this will tell it to send it here. That's about it. Now into our form. Let's start out with a basic text field first. So about first name, and then within this tag I'm going to type in input it's just just like this you know what I'm going to put a colon after that because that'll look nicer then you're going to have to address the type it's just text that's all then you have to specify a name for it I'm just going to call it first name or just FN for first name uh, it, it can be anything as long as you remember to refer to it later then there's certain things that you can do to it, like you can make give it a certain size, like maybe I want it to be 50 characters long, or it's, this number represents roughly how many characters long it'll be. So if you click save and refresh the page, there is your first text field, roughly 50 characters long. Type in as much as you want. You can also give it any kind of text field, a max, whoops max length and I keep misspelling this and that's how many characters the user is able to type in so if I just put an 8 click save and then refresh the page I can type in 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 oh, but that's it I can't type in a ninth so of course I can create another text field in fact I should probably make a make a break tag there and then copy and paste. And then I can make this last name and then change this to LN. Now max length for last name 8 is ridiculous because I know quite a few people that have like 20 or you know I'm gonna get rid of this I mean I know people that have really long last names that would really I really hurt them. In fact I should change this to 100. I've seen really long last names so let's see how this looks. Looks good. You can always add another break tag if you want to add space in between these two lines because it does look quite cluttered. Um, you can also create a password field. So I'll copy all this again. And you can change the type to password. I'll change this to just, I don't know, pass, size, I don't know, 15 characters, and I'll change this to password. Click save, refresh the page, and then when you type anything in, they're bulleted, so you can't see it. So that's that's awesome. The next thing is a text area. Well, what if you want to say like a leave a comment? 
and leave a break there. What you can do is type in within your form tax text area and then close text area. And then the attributes for the text area tag will be the name of it again. I'm just going to call it whatever. Uh, and then you can also specify how many rows and columns it has in terms of characters. So I can make it six characters and coals for columns. Uh, I'll make it a hundred characters. So you click save and you refresh the page and there it is. And by six high it's actually one more because it starts with zero. So as you see it's zero then one, two, three, four, five, six. So really it's seven. Um, next after text area is a drop down list. In order to make a drop down list, use the select, then end select, and then you can create options in there. But first, let's give this a name. Name equals, I don't know, list. And then within this, within this you can create options. Option, close option. And this will appear in a drop down menu. So, um,. Hmm. I'll give it an option A. Copy. Hmm. Hmm. B. And C. And I should probably add a break tag up there. Click save. And this will give you a list of A through B. So if I refresh the page you now have a list of A through B. Now what if you want more of these, like maybe you want two of them to appear instead, like make it multiple selection. In order to do that, in the select, type in multiple equals quotes multiple. Also, what if you want the second one to already be selected? In order to do that, type selected in the option that you want, and then type select, selected as the property. So when you refresh the page, here it is. And I don't know why that didn't work. Let me uh, open the page again. And there you go. Now the second one is highlighted already. You have to refresh, or you have to actually open the thing again. I don't know why, but and there it is. And I have all three open, so I forgot to show you size. That sh that tells you how many options it'll show you. So I refresh the page, it should only show two. And now it only shows two. It, you can still go down, up and down, as it is. Ugh. Next one's radio buttons. Let's add another break tag. Then let's say yes, and then no for our two options for the radio buttons. So here, I'll type in input type equals radio I'll give it a name and now for radio buttons make sure all the same buttons in the same group have the same name otherwise it won't erase the other one when you switch between options so I'll call this boolean boolean means true false doesn't matter and you have to give it a value you don't really have to worry about values now because that will be introduced in JavaScript why you need them but I'll just make this a yes and then I'll close it. Then I'll uh, make a break. So I'll copy all of this. And I'll paste it here. Same name, but it make it give it a different value, of course. So then when you refresh the page, you can click yes. You can also click no, but notice how this one didn't stay highlighted. If they have different names, it would have stayed highlighted, or highlighted, excuse me. Next is, man, this is going to be a long video, are checkboxes. So what if you want to give multiple options to something? So I'm just going to copy all of this. V, V, control V, control V, control V. Um, so the type for this would be a checkbox because maybe you want them to be able to um, 
select more than one thing. I'll call it choice, and I'll call this value one, value two, and value three. And I'll call this one choice as well, and this one choice, and of course this would be a checkbox. And this would be a checkbox. And I'll just make the value, I don't know, reading, gaming, and um, what else do people do? Playing. So when I press F5, now you have all your checkboxes. And it's and with them all all keep them all in the same values as well within each group and you do that with the same name. Then the la then the next thing that you can do is well what if you want to upload something or in order to give the option to upload something you type in file again you can give it a name I'll just call it upload and let's see what that does it gives you the option to browse for something you can just click the text field this will pop up you can cl click the browse and you can browse for as you can see all files and this this we'll learn more about in a uh, in in a future future languages. This is really nothing you can really do with it in XHTML right now. And then there's two more buttons. Input type equals I keep doing that. Submit. Um. I usually keep the values for these the same. Because where else are you going to use the use use a submit for a name? And you know what? I'm going to add a break tag. Break tags. Then I'm going to add in a reset button, which will clear the fields back to their or original, how they were originally. Now, by refreshing the page, I now have a submit. So if I just type in whatever in any of this and I click submit, I automatically launched Outlook because it wants to send it to my email. Of course, yeah. And that's for the reset button. As you can see, everything cleared. If I go, if I change this to the A and I have this on the no, everything would just reset. Now, what if you want to have like maybe a like a border go all the way around this. In order to do this, what you'll do is create a field set. So find your form and wherever you want the field set set to start. Type in field set. And then above your close form, end field set. Now bear in mind it doesn't have to go over everything. You can just have it go over sections. But this is just a general tutorial. Press F5 and now we have this box that goes around everything. Now what if you wanted to add in something that says complete the survey as part of the border? Well, what you can do is create what's called a legend. So under the field set, create a legend and type in complete the form, save, press F5 and now it says complete the form there. And as you might have guessed, you can also align the legend anywhere you'd like, like on the right. And that about um, wraps up for this video. This was a lot of stuff. Holy mackerel. If you need to rewatch re this and kind of catch what you might have missed, because holy mackerel, this is almost 15 minutes. I got to stop. See ya.